Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a chocolate zucchini bread. So first, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius, and you will need a loaf pan. And you can either butter it or use one of those non-stick sprays. And then I like to just take a small piece of parchment paper and just line the bottom of the pan. That way we know it won't stick. And then, this is a, like a quick bread, so we don't need an electric uh, mixer at all or even an electric hand mixer. We're going to do it all by hand. Just um, dry ingredients in one bowl, wet in another, and then we just mix them together and we're done. So the first thing we need to do is you will need one and a half cups, that's 360 milliliters of grated raw zucchini. And that, so you'll have to start with about a half a pound, 225 grams. And then I'm just using a box grater um, with the, a medium size grate. And then just take, uh, you know, cut off the ends of your zucchini and then you just grate it. And leave the skin on because we want that nice green. And as you know, zucchini doesn't have a lot of flavor, but what it does have is it's going to add a lot of uh, moisture. So this be, you know, that's why uh, zucchini bread is so wonderfully moist. So that's, uh, as you can see, this is what you're looking for. So, boat. Okay, so now we'll start with the dry ingredients. You will need um, one cup, it's 130 grams of uh, all-purpose flour. If you wanted to, you could use um, whole wheat flour here but I'm just using the white flour. And then you will need a half a cup, 45 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. And I'm using the unsweetened natural um, cocoa powder, not the Dutch process, although you could. But um, for this bread, I like the, um, the deep chocolate flavor that comes from using an uns just the natural um, unsweetened cocoa powder. And then I'm, as you can see, I'm sifting it because cocoa powder tends to have a lot of lumps and we don't want that. So. And then you will need um, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder and just a quarter teaspoon of salt. I like the kosher salt. And three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. And then I like to add just like a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I think it kind of adds, heightens the chocolate flavor and just adds a little sweetness there. You could leave it out if you're not, uh, you don't like cinnamon. And then I'm just going to use a whisk. I mean, you could sift it, but the, uh, you just want to make sure that it, like the baking powder, baking soda and the salt are all mixed into the flour and cocoa powder. And then I'm, we're going to have like a double dose of chocolate. We're going to add some chocolate chips. So three quarters of a cup, 180 milliliters of chocolate chips. I'm using a semi-sweet chocolate chip here. You could use bittersweet. You could use white um, or even milk chocolate chips. Or if you don't want to use the chocolate chips, you could just use an equal amount of chopped nuts or even some dried fruit. So just toss that around and that is our dry ingredients so for our wet ingredients you will need two large eggs and I'm just going to beat them with a wire whisk you could use your hand mixer for this or you could even pull out if you want to pull out your electric mixer your stand mixer and do it in there but I'm make it easy I'm just gonna use a wire whisk so just beat that And then what I'm going to add is a half a cup, 105 grams of packed light brown sugar. And what I like to do, because, you know, brown sugar a lot of times can get lumps. Just kind of run your fingertips through there, and if there's any lumps, just kind of get rid of them. And then a uh, half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Try to use a pure vanilla extract. It's, it, 
has a lot nicer flavor than the imitation ones. And just beat that. And then I'm going to add a half a cup, 120 milliliters of a flavorless oil. So that could mean you could use a vegetable, a corn, a canola, safflower, or even a light olive oil. What I like about using oil is it really makes baked goods moist, nice and tender and moist. And also, if you prefer to store the zucchini bread in the fridge, the good thing about oil is it doesn't harden, like butter tends to harden in the fridge when it gets cold, but oil doesn't, so it still stays soft. So really whisk that, mix it all together. And then we're going to add our grated zucchini. Distribute, mix all that in so it doesn't clump. That's why we're adding it to the uh, wet ingredients. Okay. So you can see this takes no time at all to do. And then I'm just going to add the wet to the dry. And just stir to moisten. I'm just using a rubber spatula. You could use your wire whisk. Or like I said, if you used your stand mixer, you can just do uh, all this with that in there. Doesn't that look nice? You really smell that cocoa powder. Okay, so that's it. I'll just pour it in. Even it out. So now into the oven. Everybody's oven's a little different, so I would say somewhere between, say, 55 minutes and 65 minutes, or until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. Okay, our chocolate zucchini bread is now done. A toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. So now, um, we're just going to leave it on a wire rack, still in the pan, for about 10-15 minutes to uh, cool off a little, and then I'll show you how to take it out of the pan. So to take our uh, bread out of the pan, first take like either a knife or a spatula like this, and just run it along the inside just to make sure it's not sticking to the sides of the pan. And then my pan's still a little hot, so I have another rack here. I'm just gonna flip it over, like so. There. And we'll just peel this off. So depending on how you want to serve it, you could cool it like this or just flip it around and let it cool completely before you cut it. Now, this, you can cover and store this at room temperature for several days or you can freeze it for a few months. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.